cerulean blue hue. What's up, Libron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of The Paint Show. And today we're gonna look at Cerulean Blue Hue by Schmincke. Feels like it's been such a long time since we looked at one of these and this blue has a place in my heart uh, because I used to not like blue, uh, cold blues and I used to be really into warm colors and actually this paint made me hate uh, French Ultramarine because the moment I started using it, it just blew it out of the ballpark, that's how you say it, but in any case, this made me really start to love um, colder blues because the way it mixed with yellow made such vibrant greens and this is the one thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, it just created a very fresh look that I was unfamiliar with before, while French Ultramarine and warm blues tend to create a grayed and muted green. Okay, so this is why I'm super excited about this one. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, change the angle and take a look at these this tube's uh, stats and uh, we'll also look at the brochure, Schmincke's brochure, uh, and talk a bit about more about this paint, okay? So, let's get started. Okay, so there we have it, uh, Cerulean Blue Hue. Uh, this is actually quite accurate uh, as to how the, what the color looks like. Um, so let's uh, first look at the pigment. So this one has uh, PW4, so pigment white 4, that's zinc oxide white. Uh, it also has PB153, so that's thalo blue. And the 3 is for uh, green shade. So this has the thalo blue green shade basically alongside some white. So it's not a signal pigment, it's a hue. Um, so this says cobalt free cerulean blue. The zinc oxide preserves the character of the color, similar to basic color of color theory, similar to helio cerulean. Okay, so this is Schmincke's, I think, attempt at creating a basic uh, blue that will be kind of, um, I don't know if perfect, but at least close to um, a pure primary blue. Uh, so if you look at some other things here, this is a series one, uh, which I think is a, is a real catch because uh, it's the cheapest and it's a, it's a basic one. Uh, Thalo blue usually tends to be series one from what I saw so far, um, but it's just a really good one. So a good replacement for Thalo uh, blue if you if you look for one. Um, so it has a 4 out of 5 light fastness, which means good. It is semi-transparent and it is semi-staining, uh, okay? Uh, now I'm really pleased with uh, the way this one uh, works and reacts and I'm gonna show you uh, right now. We're gonna do a quick demo and swatches and show you everything and what it looks like. So let me show you what this one looks like on the palette. <clears throat> and you can see it right here, okay? Uh, so this is the cerulean blue hue and it's essentially the same as the Daniel Smith's uh, thalo blue that I'm gonna show you right now uh, so okay so we <laughs> barely have any but it's this one now it's the same color essentially again the green shade we're gonna I'm gonna show you a comparison of the two uh, later on but this is what it looks like uh, on the palette uh, let me show you what it looks like uh, when wet so you can see a very bright and happy uh, blue that I really started liking. Uh, it's interesting how it takes some time to start liking certain paints for certain people, but for me, the moment I, it's, it was like a switch. The moment I started liking it, I really liked it. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna demo, I'm gonna show you what this looks like on paper. Okay, so I've got some swatches ready, and we're gonna start with a really light consistency here. Kind of like this, very watery. Now I'm going to add a bit more uh, pigment to the mixture and we're going to start to see what this looks like. And I'm going to add just a little more, make it really strongly saturated. There's quite a lot of birds chirping, maybe you can hear this. It's really nice. Um, and now I'm just going to pick it up straight out of the pan and just show you, so this is at its strongest, okay. Um, I'm, I'm swatching that way so that you can see the comparison later on to the uh, other colors here. This is a really useful blue, uh, I find, just super useful uh, as a primary 
to use. It's, it's just really close to, I wouldn't say neutral because it does have green in it, so it does have yellow in it. Um, but I would say it's a pretty decent choice. Uh, so now I want to show you what it looks like compared to French Ultramarine. And let me, I'm going to clean, I've got French Ultramarine really close to it uh, here. And I just want to clean that part so, so that it's pure. And I'll show you what it looks like. The French Ultramarine, I think, is much farther away from being a perfect or neutral uh, blue. So it does feel like it limits its performance, uh, at least for me. So I'm going to start here again, top to bottom. And this gives you a view of uh, what it looks like, really watered down. Now the more I'm going to add blue to it, you'll see there's a huge difference. And I'm going to show you soon some mixes with this one. Uh, what I also like about this, uh, about the cerulean blue hue or thalo blue, uh, is and it's really something that it depends on your uses, right? But what I like the most about it is that it can uh, achieve a very dark value. And unlike the, the French ultramarine that is limited, now I'm going to pick it up straight out of the pan and it's uh, less soft, it's less, you can see how this one is is darker and it was much easier to achieve that uh, level of darkness maybe it's a bit hard to see but it is uh, the case I really need to try hard to get uh, a darker value here and and with this one I barely tried I actually uh, the wash is still quite wet even here at the bottom uh, but if I would have just picked it up really straight out of the tube you'll see how uh, dark it is uh, so next up I want to uh, swatch right next to it the thalo blue uh, green shade so this one should be really similar because it's essentially uh, the same so I'm just gonna make sure that it's clean and I'm just gonna make a simple swatch here so that you can see how these two are really almost identical now it's a bit hard to tell because the, the French ultramarine invaded our space but uh, in any case here near the bottom you can probably uh, see this this the best so they're really similar. The Daniel Smith one is just slightly contaminated, uh, which could account for the minor uh, differences, but it's essentially the same color. Uh, so anyway, now let's look at some wet in wet. So I'm gonna thoroughly clean my brush, probably just change it to another one. I'm using my uh, silver black velvet brushes. Here, where is there we go, silver black velvet. Uh, the paper is Canson Montval sketchbook, 300 grams. Uh, cellulose paper, a really good sketchbook, I think. So I'm just pirouetting the area here. And a uh, sketchbook really behaves differently than a um, just a regular watercolor paper. Every paper you're gonna try out is gonna behave a little differently. Uh, so it really takes some time to, to get to used to, to get used to, uh, different papers. So anyway, uh, this is what it looks like. It spread, spreads out pretty nicely. Um, and I love most of my Schmincke paints and this is no exception. They're just wonderful, a really good brand to have. Um, now I'm gonna darken things up a little bit and some darker spots here and there. Um, and even though, even when it looks super dark in this, uh, in this specific situation, it's gonna dry up much lighter, okay? Uh, because of the large amount of water I've got here. Uh, but this is basically what this one looks like. I'm gonna add a bit more here, so you can see. And I'm just gonna clean up some of the brush and try out some dry brush show you some of the paper's texture and what result you may get uh, using this uh, as a dry with a dry, dry brush uh, so anyway this is it I'm sorry that my voice is a little weird today I just uh, I was sick for a few days and so I'm just recovering usually when I'm sick my voice tends to um, widen its possible scale of notes it can produce so I can produce much deeper sounds like mm, like this uh, than when I'm not uh, sick so anyway yeah um, 
now we can move on to the yellow mixes, okay? So what I want to show you is, again, what this looks like on the palette. And I'm just going to do, uh, I'm going to let it mix on paper a bit, so I'm going to put a bit of the um, blue here. And now I'm going to mix it with lemon yellow, because I find that this is a great combination. So I'm just going to let those mix on paper, like this. Now let me show you, here's my lemon yellow. And I'm going to just start with the yellow pure and gradually add more blue. So here we go, we take some of the blue here and we get this nice result. I'm going to add just a bit more blue here. And this is the combination that really made me fall in love with, uh, with this type of blue because it just produces beautiful greens. So now what I want to do is I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because this one holds way too much water for this small of a space in sketchbook. And I'm going to try and make this a uh, darker combination, okay? So I'm going to start with the yellow just so that I don't completely contaminate it. And now I'm going to bring some of the blue. And you can see it's, okay, it's not darker. <laughs> I'm going to add a bit of both. The yellow can't get too dark, so we'll probably have to trust the the blue to do this, the, the dark part of the work. Uh, so anyway, a bit more of both. The more blue you add, it still preserves its green, uh, but it does turn a little darker. Okay, you can see this here with a little more blue. So this is probably as dark as I can get uh, in an initial wash. Let me clean this up and add some pure yellow next to it just so you can better see it again the the lemon yellow is really hard on the on the palette it's it dries up really hard as opposed to the to this one uh, that that is really soft and easy to pick up uh, so that's interesting now I want to show you some red mixes and this one like any phthalo blue uh, when mixed with red it's gonna neutralize it uh, in some cases uh, so let me show you because it has yellow in it so the first uh, red I'm going to show it to you is with uh, cadmium red, so red uh, light, so we've got that one here. Um, and let me show you just what it looks like when it's mixed together. So I've got here some, some of the uh, blue, and remember it already has yellow in it because it's a green shade. So now I'm going to add a bit of the cadmium red light, and you see we get this kind of a gray, gray mixture, okay? It just grays it out. Uh, let me show you each of them individually. So here we have, uh, it's sort of like a metal. It reminds me of metal um, <laughs> consistency, like, um, you know, uh, rusted metal. Uh, so this is what you get from these two. Let me show you again like this. And this is the mixture. And this one can get pretty dark as well. Uh, if I just add a bit more of both, you'll see, because both of them are really strong. Both the red and the blue are really dominant. I think the, the red, surprisingly, is uh, even more dominant than the than the blue here. And this is just like the, uh, if you would combine uh, Daniel Smith's Thalo Blue and um, uh, Pyrrol Scarlet. It's basically the, the same combination. Um, I'm going to try and replace some of my basically to essentially. So it's essentially the same combination. Uh, next up, I want to show it to you with magenta. Okay, so I've got magenta here, which is another kind of, of um, red more of a it has a bit of burnt sienna in it so let me clean it up okay so this is in its purest form uh, and when i'll add some of the blue because this one it's a bit hard for me to understand because this one also clearly has um it's also a blue, but I guess because it has more, um, sorry, it's also a red, but because this has blue in it, then it neutralizes it a little less. Let me show you on the palette here. I don't have a lot of space, but I'm going to do it uh, somewhere around here. So we're going to grab some of this, some of the blue, a little more of the magenta. This is magenta. Um, I just wanted to show you Schmincke only. And this reminds me of Carbazol Violet. Uh, or like um, any kind of a basic violet that you'll uh, get when you purchase a tube. Um, so yeah, it's really similar to the combination of um, Thalo uh, Blue and Quinacridone uh, Rose by Daniel Smith. Also, it's kind of uh, it kind of mirrors the same combinations I like to use uh, with my Daniel Smith paints, which is a useful thing to know and to have. Uh, by the way, check out the Wet and Wet and how it dried. 
Okay, so uh, a really beautiful one for, for skies and for if you want to get a lot of wet and wet effects, um, create interesting textures. Uh, you can use this red if you want to get uh, gray clouds. Uh, I or already tried that one uh, before. So anyway, this is it, I think, uh, for this one. Uh, let's change the angle and wrap up this video. So there you have it, Cerulean Blue Hue by Schmincke, a really, really favorite color of mine uh, for two reasons. First one, I just love the way it looks, just beautiful, uh, just like the phthalo blue, it's one that I came to love with time, so that's the first reason. Now, so it could be used as a good primary color. Now, the second reason is that it can achieve really dark values, and I think this is really important uh, because it's just a bonus. It just allows you to use it in more ways, and sometimes I find that when I use a a trio or a primary combo that one of the colors lacks in, in uh, value, so it could be the yellows usually don't have much value, much strong value, but the reds and the blues, if both of these can't achieve dark values, which is very rare with reds, by the way, um, then it, it just frustrates me. It sometimes happens with cheaper brands. Uh, you will find out that, that one of the colors can't produce a really dark value, and it's just a disadvantage <clears throat> because it just, it's just harder to get to the richest, darkest darks, and you want to be able to mix those uh, as easily as possible. You don't want to really work hard and also ruin your brushes by scratching the, the pen constantly. Uh, so anyway, this is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I will put links to purchase this paint uh, on Amazon. I'll also put links to my podcast, to my Patreon page, to everything else. If you want to support me, Patreon page is the best place to do that and also get some nice little bonuses. Uh, and this is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in another vid real soon.